Mm -hmm. If you believe, just like Nikola Tesla and Einstein have said, that everything is energy, vibration, and frequencies, and that the way you vibrate and the way you emanate energy, you will attract in your life those things that resonate at the same frequencies and energy that you are, then whatever question, thought you have, you have the answers you want in front of you. And you will attract in your life the things that you're ready to hear and accept because your inner dynamic is doing it for you without you knowing. Mike, the mm -hmm. mic. Yo, you know, mm -hmm. she, like, check one, check, 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 check. Remember, I don't know if you guys remember that old... It was a it was a B side on an old Tribe Called Quest song, and they had Buster Rhyme. He was like, "What, what, what, what? One, two, one, two, what? What, what, what? One, two, what?" <laughs> and yo, you know, it's Buster Rhymes every time. Oh yes, I'm coming. <laughs> no, so all right, so <laughs> so listen, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to it's more than black or white. Yes, that dude in between is the guest today. You see his name, but we're gonna get to him in a moment. Thank you for joining us. This is the More Than Black Away podcast, health podcast. If you are a new viewer to the podcast, thank you for joining us. This podcast is helping others become an advocate for their health and well-being. My partner here, Brian Reinken, we're here. We're here for you, man. We want to give you the tools and tips to help you be an advocate for your health and well-being, which can include physical, mental, social, spiritual. Check the catalog. We, we, we in there. So listen, like, share, subscribe so you can get our shorts and the reels on a regular basis. And thank you for joining. If you're coming back to us, welcome back. You know, we got to start off with check in. B, how you doing, B? Everything's good, man. Almost, I can't believe it's almost October. Almost, almost quarter four. So I'm going into uh, today. I started like, you know, I always set my yearly goals, um, like big goals I want to accomplish. So now I'm looking at my 2024 goals. I'm like, all right, quarter four is coming around. Am I, how close am I going to hit it? What do I got to do? Do I got to accelerate and, you know, go for it. So, um, yeah, everything's good. Now I start brainstorming my 2025 goals. I made a list and ready to roll, man. I'm ready. Two big things. Look at you. Look at you. This is what they call Eric Thomas. Yanis, you know, Eric Thomas, do you ever heard of him? I don't think I did. Oh, bro, this dude, he's he's hype. I think you dig him yeah. because he's like a motive. Sometimes he's a little too much, though, actually. But, like, he's got this term called fourth quarter living. Mm. So it's, like, it's like that, bro. It's oh, like, I like that. So I like that term, fourth quarter yeah. living. And it's basically yeah. what you're doing, right? It's like yeah. reflect on the year and this whole concept reflect on the year. Where are you going in the following mm. year? What tools do you need to get there? It's like his, his mm. way of doing, like, a performance review. So it's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. So – Without any further ado, because I, yeah. I know everybody now, like, you know, they heard me and Brian, then they heard Yanis' voice. They were like, what? <laughs> so, friends, subscribers, to all the people viewing, we want to take the opportunity to welcome Yanis Goldman yeah. to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us, bruv. We want to bring your voice to the to the container, thank man. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to... Uh... To be here with you guys today, yeah, man. to be a part of something that is greater than all of us, where we're trying to enlighten other people's soul so they could reach new height. So to be a part of it, to advocate for this purpose and to have the honor to be with you, mm -hmm. I'm just blessed and thankful. Yo. Thanks for coming, uh, man. Yes. You. yes. So I, I, you know, I'm going to do an intro. And mm -hmm. a little history on how this all came to be. Of course. So, of course. yeah, in my full time job, I, my one of my coworkers is friends with Yanis, and she was telling me about this book. Right? She didn't tell me about Yanis yet. She was telling me about this book. She knows I'm. She knows I'm a spiritual, dude. I I like alignment. Like I, I'm one of those cats. Be you know, I see a cardinal, I'll be like, it's my mom. Or I like <laughs> see you know, like I'll see a wolf, or I'll see a fox, or something. I'll be like, it's time for me to get creative. So. I was going through some stuff and she knew it. So she was like, Hey, Paul, I got this book. I, you know, pick a number. There may be something, there may be something in the book that could help you out. I'm like, yo, that's why you had to tell me. I was like, yo, 
I forget what the number. I think I was like, I think it was like 22. Because the book is one to 30, right? It's yeah. One to 30, that's correct. Yes. We, we can take a book, talk about we're gonna talk about that. Oh, we go. I'm all excited. So this, so this she was like, I'm gonna I want I want to I'm gonna take you to this book of words, which is Yanis's production. It's his product, it's his baby. So this when she gave me the readout for the number, I was like, what? How did it? I said, yo, who wrote this book? Who is it? <laughs> so so I got so excited because what came in the book was exactly what I needed at that time. So I, I did this several more times. And then there was a, another time I did it where it was a really potent message for me in relation to fatherhood. So I was like, man, I got to have this dude on because I want to learn more about him. And Yanis is a, from what I've seen and, and what I've experienced of him, the dude is thorough, man. He's a real deal. He's a real McCoy, originally from France, living in Miami right now. He's a trainer. I see he's dedicated. He's committed. And um, I, I I think, uh, I personally think like um, he's from some galaxy brought here to <laughs> help elevate the collective. My personal, in my in my humble opinion, um, so I'm like, we got, I'm like, yo, B, I got this dude. We got to go. We got to find out about him. So here he is, Yanis Goldman. We appreciate you. Um, I mean, listen, man, how, tell us a little bit about your hero's journey, man. How did you get here? So people can learn a little bit more about you, bro. Wow. That, that's a long story, but I'll try to make it not too long. <laughs> the, the, the big pivotal moments. Cool. So I'm originally from Paris, France. I uh, grew up in a household of a very diverse culture. Mm. On my dad's side, it's Middle Eastern, French, European. On my mom's side, it's Western Africa. So my dad is white, right? And my mom is black. So it's it's really a cross of culture. And, and I grew up in a place where the most important message was to believe in ourselves, to believe in our dreams, and also to always seek for happiness and do good. There yeah. was nothing tied to religion. There was nothing tied to society, <laughs> but just to be a good person. And so as time, you know, I grew up in, in, in Paris and I ended up playing basketball, right? Um, part of, of being in France, you have this ability to, to touch all kind of things at an early age. And uh, I became very good at basketball and I wanted to have the American dream. So at the age of 14 years old, I actually came to the U.S. to play basketball. I played high school, played college. And uh, fast forward, um, I had a little ups and downs in between. I stopped playing basketball after playing for my national team. I played for the Senegalese national team when I was 20 years old. I was the youngest by many years. I came back to school, to the university I was with, and I felt that, you know, something was missing. I felt like the energy that I brought for my summer was not the right thing. So I actually dropped out of college for a year where I went back to Paris. And uh, during that time, uh, I kind of had one of the most blissful experience because I got to spend so much time with my family after not going, living in there for many years. I got to spend time with... Uh, my mom, my dad, my nieces, and, um, you know, also realized that there was just more, again, to life than that moment. So it was a big reset. And I decided to go back to the U.S. and uh, follow my journey here because I knew I had something to to do in this place because America is really the place where all, all the opportunities happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, fast forward, ended up... Um, changing major, changing everything, and uh, landed a beautiful job from one of my men, one of the person that I picked as a mentor in commercial real estate, and um, which is what I'm doing full time as my uh, day to day. I'm a, I'm a VP of acquisition and disposition for private equity group. We invest in commercial real estate building, but I do also a, a few things on the side, such as writing, speaking, coaching people, and uh, more importantly, trying to share a message where my goal is to help people live their dream a reality. It's beautiful, man. That's awesome. Thank hey, you. Hey, Paul. Uh, yeah. 
It's not me this time, right? Yeah, yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't you. I was <laughs> coughing for. I was like, I, I was like coughing and listening. I was like, yo, this this is so fresh. Yeah, so, so many things, man. So many things we I want to dive into. Um, because like the reason why we ask that when we have a guest on is because, uh, and and Brian, you were the one who really started that. Um, because we think it's a really good way for our guests to get to know you. Yeah what you do, but also who you are, man. Because one of the things when you were talking about growing up in that diverse background oh. and it was really about believing in yourself and doing good, man, I was like, dang, bro. I was like, what? That's what I'm talking about. What? And as far also having a son that, um, I have a son that's biracial. So like, um, so you saying that and like your background, I'm like, that's freaking really cool, man. Um, really cool. Uh, I got a, I got some questions before I do that. B, um, anything you want? Oh, where where in uh, West Africa is your family from? Yeah. Senegal. I'm actually going to Senegal in two weeks, and then I'm you landing in Paris for a day. Yeah, I'm going in the, the car. I'm doing yeah. Senegal and Gambia. I'm doing like a going to be kind of going solo out there. I'm You're looking forward. To it. It's it's probably going to be one of the most incredible. Have you been to Africa before? Yes, I was there earlier in the year. I was in South Africa and Kenya and Mauritius. So I'm looking forward. I've never been to the West. Some beautiful energy. It's it's a little different, obviously. Yeah, I can't I'm wait. I'm so excited. Yeah, energy, so, I thought I heard you say so Senegalese, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, I'm like the small world. <laughs> <laughs> I tell I, people I'm going to Senegal all the time, and they're like, where is that? I've never even heard of that country. I'm like, exactly. That's why I'm going there. You know, I love it. That's awesome. That's what's up, bro. That's yeah, what's up, man. I did listen. I really appreciate how small the world is. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that because yeah, I'm like, damn, I'm just putting this two together. I'm like, oh yeah, be oh junk. Yeah. So uh so some things that like really stuck out when you were explaining your journey and 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 my 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 thought process about like just what kind of what I'm thinking well, had you create the book. I'm curious, like what were some of the things that um that activated in you when you had that reset? with your family before you came to the u.s dream bigger it's okay. all about putting yourself in situation where you're going to be able to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. as well as thriving mm -hmm. because what happened is i went back home and for a while i was just hanging out because the system in france is set up so that people could rely on the government they don't really need to work hard they have all the social help possible so mm -hmm. i was at home living with my parents i don't have to worry about rent i don't have to worry about money and then i got a little bored so i was playing basketball i was studying i was trying to find a job end up working with my dad he was running a tech company to actually create um on-demand travels for um local agencies mm -hmm. and he was connecting them to uh, people overseas uh, we've who offer activities or for like day passes and stuff like that. So like, for example, like he, he just created a, a, a software I was working on with him for a while. Yeah. I was hustling, buying and selling sneakers before sneakers was a big thing. Like the Yeezys, the Nikes, mm -hmm. the Jordans. I mean, I was, I was pretty big on that. That's kind of like how my entrepreneurial lifestyle started. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always into buying and selling, but uh, what happened was one of the most incredible moment of my life is I ended up working with my uncle who owned a restaurant in the mm -hmm. middle of Paris. And the way it happened is, I was just hanging out with him. He's like my second dad. And the way it worked is, I, I was seeing some possibilities with social media that they were not tapping into. So I told him, yo, you guys should do a Facebook. You guys should do an Instagram. You guys should run ads. You guys should have this website. You guys should do this, 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 this. He told me, here, I give you X amount of dollars, euros, and you can do it for us and end up doing that for them. And then one thing led to another. So now I'm spending a lot of time in that restaurant. The next thing you know, I'm at the bar. I'm in the kitchen. I'm with the chef. I'm buying groceries. And everything went from me just helping him with social media to becoming the director of the restaurant, handling 15 employees at 21 years old, <laughs> handling the money, paying people X, Y, Z. Yeah. What really happened is there was an accountant over there that was living a great life, a lot of freedom. He was able to help his family because what he did is he went overseas, he studied, he got a diploma and he took all that knowledge and took it back home and mm. used that 
to deploy all the knowledge he received. So he had a big advantage with yeah. everyone around and was able to develop his accounting firm. So it's everything is automated for him. He travels everywhere. He he owned multiple apartments. He was owning clubs. He was everywhere. And I was like, wow, if I could just sacrifice a little bit of time to go back to the States, change my diploma, focus on finance and focus on the things I also like, which is business yeah. and come back home, then I'll have an edge and I'll be able to help and provide for my family. Because as a kid, I've always been wanted to provide for my family. I've always wanted to be the one that's going to be organizing the events, the one that's going to be giving back to my mom, to my dad, making sure they don't have to worry about anything, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. it it is really the idea of dreaming bigger and not being content with just having what you have as well as being grateful for what you have. Because yeah. what would happen is in life, most of the time, we're always seeking for self-development, moving up, moving up, moving up. But mm -hmm. we're not really being grounded in the moment and being present and flowing, which is almost like seeking for more dopamine, seeking for more healing, seeking for more things. While what I realized over my journey, most of the things you want are sitting within you. Mm -hmm. And all the answers of the universe, of the world, of any question that you have that you need now are already in your consciousness, ready to be unlocked. So mm -hmm. ultimately, back then, that was my point of view. And, and I've had, I mean, I'm telling you, I've had a lot of a lot of different experience, even yeah. though I'm, I'm still young and I'm thinking I'm getting older. I'm turning 30 next month, but um, it's it's been an incredible journey. Yes, I I hear it. Your, your journey has been vast, man, and worldly. <laughs> it's interesting when you say because Brian, you and I have talked a lot about uh, what you seek is in, it is already in you. Like that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we love this pod. We love doing this podcast because it's about helping people find the answers within and for what's specific to them. So I'm curious when when you talk about um, like especially the answers being in you. Uh, I'm curious, like, what was your process to begin really settling into? Well, actually, what was your process into even thinking or or or, or creating this book of a book of words, man? So, book of words. I've always wanted to write a book for the longest time, right? I actually started to write a different book when I was in college, which was Awakening how to set yourself for success while in college with all the different lessons that I wish I knew when I stepped into my college dorm, right? I haven't published that book. It's written, but uh, I might pivot from that. Now, my entire life has been to give back to people, has been to be of service in helping others and bringing like life and light and smiles into the people around me. Right. If you go out places, if you go with me, you realize that my energy is always making people feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And so during COVID, I was having a little bit of more time for myself. And ultimately, what happened is I realized that during that time, people needed to have more guidance, more ways to align themselves with who they truly are. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually texting one of my friend every day and I was giving him some very beautiful advices and I was giving him like ways I was thinking about the world. And I was like, you know what? This is so cool. What if I create an Instagram, I create a book and I just give it to the world so that any person that come across this could find a way to realign themselves with who they are just 30 days because it's a book of words. It, the, the way it came to me was just because it's words that I'm just talking about and I'm explaining the philosophy about it. Mm -hmm. And it's 30 words because it's one word for each day of the month because it takes you just 30 days to get in a new habit to mm -hmm. do anything. Whether you want to go to the gym, whether you want to go and like be mindful, you want to journal, you're starting anything 30 days is enough so that it's programmed in your subconscious and yeah. that even if you stop you have enough foundation for you to push forward and yeah. so ultimately a book of word is a guide 
so that you can go on your own journey to realign with yourself. Mm. That's interesting, man, because so what I'm hearing is, is like, okay, you wrote this. You These are words. <laughs> these are simply words that you're like, yeah, I'm going to put this into, I'm going to put this on a book. But um, it's like the energy, like you put the words out there, but I'm curious, like, well, tell the audience about what Book of Words is and and then I'm curious to know, like, how do you recommend they use it? Like, is it going word like one, two, three, four, five? So, or is it like, did yeah. Do you want to know how it happened? Yes. So I yes. wrote Book of Words 2020. Okay. And so, okay, hold on one second. Every I'm telling you, when we be you noticing this, whenever we talk, whenever pe- we uh interview people about shift. A lot of stuff happened in that COVID time, man. Yeah. No one else had anything to do. They had to reach for the goals then. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to hear my theory about COVID? Yes. <laughs> and then the next week, yes, I want to hear this. Have you guys ever meditated before? Yes. All the time, yeah. What happened when you meditate? A lot of things. Um, like you, calm, quiet. Here, you know, everything just kind of expands. You just you 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 see things differently than you normally wouldn't do. You normally you wouldn't see in the in this reality. Like you just, it, we all have like I think of when you when you're like unconscious, you're you can only see linear. When you when you meditate, your subconscious expands laterally, so you can see a bunch of different things, and you can tap into a different resources. And 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 this is my analysis of what happened during COVID. Everyone was home, and everyone was still. Everyone's mm-hmm. energy was just limited by the room. Right. Not everyone was being affected by the world and triggered by the different things. So a lot of the unconscious of the universe, of the world, of mankind, if you guys ever read about um, Carl Jung, he talks about the collective unconscious. A lot of a lot of ideas, a lot of things came out during COVID because it was still on the earth. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people thrive. Also, a lot of people suffered. In the same time, it could go both ways. There's always a balance, right? We talked about the seven uh, hermetics laws and and the and the laws of the universe. You know, everything like the pendulum swing, but everything is always balanced, right? Yeah. So during them. COVID, that's why TikTok blew up because that was the only one of the main app that was available for people to focus on, right? So. Where your focus goes is where your attention goes. And during that time, a lot of the attention was on the self, unconsciously or consciously. So the collective, we're all just kind of feeding off each other's off each other's consciousness. They say that when someone has an idea, Mm -hmm. 7,000 other people have the same idea around the world. And it's just a question of who is the individual who's going to have the will the attention and the intention to manifest that idea. Because yeah. most of the idea are thoughts that comes from the subconscious, but we share thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. When we all think about Instagram, you guys can have an image of Instagram popping in your mind. We're not in the same room. We're not even looking at our screen. So that's mm-hmm. obviously a whole different conversation about how we are all one and connected through the ether, the Ak- Akasha. Mm-hmm. You guys were talking about the Akashic record earlier today. But um <laughs> that's my thought about why a lot of things came out during covid Word. Yes. So i wrote the book i did other things and for the longest i was like i don't know if that book is ready to get published so mm. I, I dragged it i dragged it one year one year and a half and i was finding all the right people along the way to help me with the book whether it's the illustration whether it's the uh, co- um the copy whether it's anything i was finding all the solutions but I was having a tough time to finish it. But what happened is one day I went to a party with some cool friends of mine, art, artists. Um, and someone asked me, what do you do for a living? I said, I do commercial real estate. You know, if I sell you commercial real estate, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's a commercial real estate. But I wrote a book. It's called a book of word. You know what? Let's do something fun. Can you pick a word, a number between one and 30? And they picked the number. And I looked at my Google Drive where everything was saved. It was like one word, save one by one. I just went to the number 
the 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 order of which the word was presented. So if it was number one, two, three, four, five, I went to that number, I give it to that person. And that person was like, oh my God, this is something I'm experiencing in my life. I'm like, oh, cool, that's interesting. I'm like, I went to another person. I did that again. Another person, another person, another person, another person. A hundred people later, I'm like, whoa. Every person that picks a number is having something that, that resonate with their life. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the click in my mind that it was, this is bigger than me. Yeah. I have to get this thing published because it's not for me, but it's for the world. Mm -hmm. And so 30 days, 30 words was just for 30 days. It was supposed to be mm -hmm. read in an order. Right. But with the magic of life, it just happened that it turned out to be an extremely intuitive book where people would just pick a number, open a random page, and find the answers they were looking for. Yeah. And so it's yeah. just yeah. very intuitive. And the way it worked, I have no idea. I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. I love it. I love it. I had listen, that's that's part of the magic though. Yeah. That's part of the magic because, like, well, you can't make logic in an illogical world. You know, you just gotta, you know, this, this things out there that are way beyond our, our senses. So that's yeah. that's all. Awesome. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, you, you're not paying attention to the amount of red, red blood cells that are in your body right now, refueling, mm -hmm. going through the oxygen going through recycling we don't know even what's happening within our body in real time mm -hmm. so like if you believe even in evolution if you believe in in anything right so the way things grow and the things are born i mean think about it we, we the way we grow is just it's so even harder to explain we can explain it on paper but we still do not comprehend to this day how and why yeah because yeah. consciousness is consciousness. Yeah. So True. Yeah. how do you define that? <laughs> not, not in a lab, I'll tell you that. Yeah, not in a lab, man. I think Maybe with a handful of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. A lot of meditation in the yeah. Himalayas. <laughs> or that way. Yeah, or that way. Yeah. Yeah. Meditation is all the M's. <laughs> all the M's. I think that's powerful because I think uh, as entrepreneurs, we're all three of us are entrepreneurs, and I think a lot of people are getting in, are getting trying to go down that route of. I think most people want to be an entrepreneur; they just don't have the the discipline to kind of do it. And what I, what I feel is, as an entrepreneur, and I catch myself in this, even though I meditate every day, I, I try to I try to be in the now. You're always trying to like you're in the future. It's some so your mind's always in the future. You're like trying to check boxes and like have goals set and, and go after them, which is nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you just, you're, you don't appreciate the now in front. So I feel like, I feel like your book kind of like, like takes you, it takes you a step back, appreciate the now work within, and you can actually reach your goals a lot easier or more efficient. And, and, and thank you. That, that means a lot. And you're right on with that because earlier today I was actually having a conversation this morning on my way to work with a friend of mine. She's a little younger but she's a big time creator. She has this capacity to turn an idea into the material world in a pace that's like, I've not seen it the way it is. Like I, I'm, I'm noticing it firsthand. And I keep telling her, you have this capacity to create that's like unbeatable. I've not seen that. And actually I've seen only one person being able to manifest or create as they spoke or as they were thinking. But that person is a very, very, very famous and very, mm -hmm. very, very successful. Um, that's why, you know, he is in the position he is. But I was telling her that at the end of the day, she, she was asking me for advice and she was asking me how could she handle the desire of always wanting to be more? Is she going to be able to fulfill that? Is she going to be to grow? She's very entrepreneurial, like you were saying, and she was doubting a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what I told her is right now, you always you're seeking for something outside of yourself, right? Instead of validating this very moment and slowing down and paying attention to history to, to to your story, because you've done what you want to do already. 
you have already created a new identity in the n- past couple of years. So whatever identity you want to create next, you're going to create. You have accomplished all these things in the past. So whatever you created already, you're just going to reciprocate that just differently. And a lot of time is, and and I have this exercise in my coaching program. Um, it's called rewriting your past. And rewriting your past is actually a true thing. It is an exercise that you do when you go talk to your younger self or you go talk to you in the past and either comfort them, ask them what they were thinking, ask them what was happening, and you get a lot of your answers that you want today from what already has passed. You just were not conscious about it. So what you're doing with this exercise is you're bringing the different conscious thoughts that were hidden in your mind. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's very, very powerful to slow down at times, especially when you're constantly moving, because mm-hmm. then you know which place to go. But you can also flow and let the universe decide for you. But I think when you see a cliff and you see a path, if you don't have a parachute, some people are going to jump. They're going to try to create a parachute out of thin air. Mm-hmm. And some people are going to see that there's a bridge over there. So it, it's really a perception game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Obi, you have a question? Or, no, or, no, just acknowledging it. It's not like that. So this is because uh, a couple of things you mentioned that we spoke about um, before, specifically the hermetic principles. And we actually, at the time of this recording, we have our Akashic Records episode coming out, like literally the next was coming out tomorrow. Um which in at the after this recording is the 25th of September. And one of the things is uh, concepts of hermeticism is as above, so below. So, so within, so without. Yep. Yes. I think people already know the answer before they go to the book. Before you even go to the book, you know what you needed to hear. Your energy guided you there. Right. There's a piece that takes you to this, to that page, to saying, well, like, oh, I I don't know, 22. Now, and I'm saying this specifically because there was a couple of times when my coworker asked me what number and I had a number and then I wanted to do another one. And I was like, nah, with the first one, you go with the first one. Yeah, that was what I needed. You know how I call those? What's that? Synchronicities? No, I call those well, those are synchronicities, but yeah, um, I call those the whispers. I call those the whispers yeah. of the universe or the mm-hmm. whispers of the self, which mm-hmm. if you tune your mind enough, you will be able to hear everything that's happening in the mm-hmm. back of your mind. And actually, a lot of people believe that the subconscious is below the conscious, but the subconscious is above the conscious because it has so many more information. That is dealing with and mm-hmm. the super conscious the collective unconscious is over that mm-hmm. and you go all the way to the creation so yeah. why maybe people pick those numbers mm-hmm. i don't know but yeah. if i had to um, to to explain it by deduction which mm-hmm. is how philosophers were doing back in the days a lot of people that are writing those magical books or those spiritual book or philosophical book will go about. Mm -hmm. If you believe, just like Nikola Tesla and Einstein have said, that everything is energy, vibration, Mm -hmm. and frequencies, and that the way you vibrate and the way you emanate energy, you will attract in your life those things that resonate at the same frequencies and energy that you are, then whatever question, thought you have, you have the answers you want in front of you. And you will attract in your life the things that you're ready to hear and accept because your inner dynamic is doing it for you without you knowing. Yes. Have you ever seen, and maybe you can put that video, the tuning forks. Yeah. When you put a tuning forks at 440 hertz next to a tuning fork at 430 hertz, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. But if you put a tuning fork at 432 hertz next to another 432 hertz and you hit one without hitting the other, the vibration is going to move through space so that the other one will vibrate at the same frequency and Mm -hmm. resonance. 
So, okay. So that's what, yes, I think I had to explain my question without making it a question because that's exactly you, you got to what I was, what, what I thought it was. And it's the tuning in I'm recognizing with your book. And for people that are watching, I highly recommend you get this book. I think it's a great coffee table book. Of course, I think it's a great, like coming up on the holidays, Buy like, it for your mama, buy it for your sister, buy it yo, for your buy cousin. For, <laughs> buy it for everybody. Be like, yo, put this on your And then you can have a, you can make a party tricks. Be like, hey, mm -hmm. I bet you I got some advice that's relevant. Mm -hmm. And then you can, hey, bitch, if I, hey, if I give you some advice, will you give me, that applies, you give me $20? Sure. Here you go. <laughs> but no, all serious, I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's extremely important, this book, because what I recognize and what you said, the key word, that you said, which I think resonates with everything that you've experienced is tune, tune in. Because first of all, I had to think about when using this book, I had to think about a scenario, meditative practice, being still into one thing. Okay, what is it about this scenario I wanna, I wanna know about? Well, hmm, all right, now I know. Hey, oh, what's the number? Damn, now I got something else to think about, right? It's tuning in to what your what's happening inside. And I think and I'm realizing that's one of the reasons I really appreciate this tool, this book, because I think it's one of those things. Like I'm a big fan of oracle cards. I don't pull them as much as I used to, but like I'd be like, mm, I'd be like, you know what, this card, I'd be like, how did you know? <laughs> I'd be like, oh junk. It just the energy is so powerful and the frequency when we can tune into something. And be on that frequency and that vibration, we become that thing. It's it's like people could call it magic, but really, I think it's what it is. I think that's just like a natural law. It's um, huh? It's really life. Like I, I just want to expand a little bit on that because yeah, please. If you think about it, every single thing around you has a geometrical shape, mm. and that shape resonates at a certain frequency to hold its form. We are talking scientific explanation on how atoms, electrons, and much more are playing a role with one another. There's obviously gravity and there is space. So if you believe that your thoughts are part of you and hold a certain frequency, the way I would explain that mm -hmm. law I just saw, that, that reality, that truth I just said is, I'm going to do something that could be not so nice, but it's okay. Think about the worst day you've had in your life. Mm. If you think about the worst day you've had in your life, that's automatically bringing you down. But now I'm going to ask you, both of you guys, think about the day your first child was born. Mm. Now, a smile comes up. You start feeling good. You start feeling happy. Mm. So your thoughts do have an effect on your inner self. So if your thoughts have an effect on your inner self and they hold a certain vibration within you that makes you feel a certain way, then depending on how you're feeling, depending on how your inner being is acting, then you will attract to those different cards, those different people, those different experiences, those different environments. And that's why I've been always a huge advocate of moving yourself to places where you will resonate at a different frequency. Because just by default, you would always be higher if you put yourself that are higher than you. Mm, mm. Man, I really appreciate that. Yes, man. Um, so always hold the good thoughts. Yes. And thoughts are things, man. Thoughts are things. Uh, Everything you see was once a thought. This yes. mic right here was imagined by someone that drew it and then that hired an engineer to put all the different electrical circuits so it could be connected to transfer the voice from my inner self to mm. you, to this computer, and now to all the streams you guys are going to have. Mm. Ultimately, that was once a thought that is currently living on its own in okay. other people's life. Mm. Truth. Truth. Man, brother. Hey, man. I, I, don't, I don't know where the applause is. I think I have applause somewhere, but I'm like, Yes! <laughs> standing applause, standing applause. So I, I so listen, I wanna this has been this has been powerful. And for people that are listening, I think this is important. This this episode I'm realizing is really important for your mental health, um, your spiritual health, and your energetic health. Um, really tapping in and tuning in.
And a couple of things, especially in light of the title of Yanis's book, Yanis, as we as we start to wind down the session, I'm curious uh, for you, can you explain to the people or share with the people how important are words in someone, in your perspective, how important are words in someone's overall health and well-being? So when I say Paul, you're, you come out. The way you look, the way you act, the way you think, the way you smell, it's like a whole universe arrives into our consciousness. When I say flower, people can start thinking about a flower and then they see a rose, they could see something else, they could smell something, they could touch something, they could see a, a whole background. Words are truly, in my opinion, and what I believe is true, the crystallization of thoughts and hence hold the power to bring those thoughts into life. That is why in the Bible they say the words came with God because the word was God. Because when you speak and when you use word, you create, you bring forth a whole spectrum of the universe into this one piece of statement, right? Just that one vibration alone can take your imagination on a journey. So words can hold the power to create, destroy, mm -hmm. unify, divert. It, it, it has a, almost an unlimited power. And if you put word in a certain way, you have rhythm, then you have music, now you have people dancing. World or the way we frame our thinking, words are the way we frame our being. Words are truly the materialization of the unconscious, make conscious on a vib on a vibra on a vibrational um substance. Mm. Bless up, man. Thank you. Man. Beautifully said. I like that. Yes. Dr. Yes. Immortal would be so proud. That yeah. this dude that did the study on the words on on rice. Did you ever heard of this dude? Dr. Yamoto? No. You keep so, giving me good good names right now. Yeah, so dude, so he so he did this study where he had rice and then he put like uh I forget the words that he put on the rice. But the word that was positive, the rice flourished, right? The rice was good. The word that was negative, the rice decayed. So he it was on water too. Yeah, he did it on water too. And he got, with the water, he checked the crystallization of the water. It was just like jagged with the negative yeah yeah, yeah. The, okay so yeah, yeah i know i know exactly what you're talking about yes yeah. yes dr Yamoto. so it was that was a powerful study and you summed it up brilliantly with your words man uh, brian do you have a qu question comment no 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 um uh, listen this is ah man i'm happy that we had this time to to check in and i want to give space for you to share how people can get in contact with you. We'll also give you an opportunity to share your programs because, bro, I heard one of the programs you're talking about with the rewiring, man. I like that. I like the rewiring, the telling the stories. I do something like that similar. And I also heard in your program, you were doing a little internal family system parts work where you go into your inner child, be like, hey, inner child, you good? Come on, I'm here. Let me talk to you for a second about this thing. And you start to rewire things. So, Bless up, bless the people with how they can get in contact with you, um, how they can get the book, and also what other programs do you have out here right now that you want to offer up to the peoples, man? Bring the goodness. Of course, of course. The most important thing I'd say that every answer is within you, and that most of the time you just don't know how to find these answers, and that's why you go seek for advice and facilitator, whether it's for your consciousness, whether it's for sports, whether it's for athletic, whether it's for fitness, nutrition, whatever it is. Um, so the first thing I'd say is trust yourself more. And then from there, take decision. The way you'll find me, you can find me on uh, Instagram. You can find me online at Yanis Goldman, uh, Y-A-N-N-I-S, Goldman, G-O-L-D-A-M-A-N. And um, you can also find my book, A Book of Words, on Amazon, available um, worldwide, which is amazing. I was able to have my family and friends have it. 
And uh, one of the program I'm, I'm working to bring to the public, because right now I've been doing a lot of uh, behind the scene work with a few people where I help people realign themselves with their purpose and their next level identity following um, a program, nutritional fitness, and also mental mindset slash spiritual, where we go on a journey to uh, reshape the way you live, reshape the way you think about yourself so that you can have better relationship, so that you can be happy, so that you can make more money and much more. So that program is going to roll out very soon. I'm uh, finalizing a few things uh, on this, but uh, I've already having some people on the program and will be more marketed. The more, more mar will be marketing the program much more on my social media. So if you would, are looking to change the way your body, mind, and spirit works so you can align with your purpose and your divine calling, make sure you send me a DM. Because my goal in life is to help people live their dream a reality. Hmm. And so yeah. it is. And so it is. We'll put that in the show notes. We'll yes. put those in the show notes. So. All the goodies, man. All the goodies. Man, Yanis, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this, man. Thank you for showing thank up. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for having me, despite yeah, all man. the troubles we had prior to this. Listen, oh. man. I, I, listen. <laughs> It's all good, man. That's a testament to your perseverance. You're like, yo, I'm going to get this piece. Yeah, there was no way we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. You guys yeah, just get up here. You guys yeah. will be, you're like, be like, nope. wow, I got like three cameras, three lights, <laughs> seven <laughs> microphones, three computers. <laughs> just so yeah. we, you know what? One thing people got to realize is, and this is a, a download I had yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, your intention and attention are the ways you're gonna realize anything you want in life mm -hmm. your attention is the way your energy gets spent your intention is the energy within coming out so when you say intention it's within the tension so and your attention is the uh, in energy intention intention inertia energy um is moving out so your attention is the your energy moving out your intention is your energy moving in so you're attracting a new reality within yourself so the way you spend your attention your energy out and your energy went in and the way you control your will is the way you're going to be able to create anything you want in life so you got to be willing anything you can with a good heart so that you can make it happen for yourself mm -hmm. and do not listen to anyone but your own compass and your own compass sits in your heart. Mm. Bless you. Yeah. Potent words, brother. Potent yeah. words. Thank Party you. Yeah, listen to this again and take some notes. Brother, <laughs> yes. Oh, I forgot to say that in the beginning. Yeah, man. People rewatch this, take some notes down and go get the book, book of word, a book of words on Amazon. The, in the information will be in the show notes. Listen, this this book, I'm telling you, it's 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 intuitive. It's intuitive. This is some a book for everybody. So get that piece. Reach out to Yanis if that program is of, of, of appealing to you. Go for it. And listen, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. We're going to have to have you Thank back you guys. on. Thank you We're guys for offering that beautiful space. Bless up, man. It's a pleasure for us to offer this space. And I just want to let you know we, want, we are open to doing a part two on location in mm -hmm. Miami. All right. Yo, bro, look, man, I got that 21 day detox light waiting, man. Yo, I'm getting the body right, man. I've been hitting up the pull ups and dips, son. Y'all need to show you on the pull ups, baby. I saw you, son. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Listen, let's I can't wait to have you guys down here. I think that if you guys come here, I will take you on the Miami journey that is very wholesome. Because there is this magical side of Miami that no one really knows about, full mm -hmm. of artists, full of creators, full of beautiful, subtle things, apart from the clubbing, the boobs, the fake asses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down. Oh, the truth. Let's go. My guys. Road trip. Road man. trip. Bro, yeah. let's go, B. B. <laughs> and Brian, brother, you know it's always a pleasure and joy to do this with you. Absolutely, man. Great. Great. All right.
All right, thank you, you guys. Safe I appreciate travels it. Safe travels too, Brian. Safe travels. Bless up, everybody. Like, Peace share, subscribe. We're out of here. You know how, how is Senegal? Yes, can't you wait. Better try. So this is this dish. It's called pule yasa. Pule All right, okay, wait, I'm writing this yasa. down. Pule, pule yasa. Yasa. And then the second one is chebujen. 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 All Once right. This food hits your tongue. Give me a call. It's going to be one of the best food <laughs> you ever had in your life. Uh, All right, guys. Thank this you is so an much. example of what we do here. This is expansion, baby. This is expansion. Peace, everybody. Like always. Peace.